Just good to see all of you in the house. First Corinthians chapter 10. I'd like to notice one verse, and that's the 13th verse, and we'd like to take our premise from there. If you found it, say amen. amen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, which means anything that come against you, it ain't strange. Somebody else done gone through it. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You may be seated. I'd like to speak to you from a thought today on the auspices of the Holy Spirit, it still works. It still works. We've often heard it said in church, God will not put more on you than you can bear. That is false theology. And you'll find it nowhere in the word of God. Somebody heard that from somebody else and they ran with it. Because sometimes God will allow more to be on you than you can bear by yourself. Because sometimes life will knock the life out of you. Well, I wish I had a witness in here. Sometimes you're gonna go through some troubles, some trials, some tribulations that may come along that's, that's too much for you to handle by yourself. Some of you sitting in here right now have gone through some things and and some may be sitting in here that 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 are still going through some things that, you know, that without the Lord being there for you, you would have lost your mind. You would have given up. You would have thrown in the towel. But God. Boy, I wish I had about 15 of y'all. I'd be number 16 who's got a but God testimony. Amen. They said I wouldn't make it. But God, they said I wouldn't be here today. But God, they said I wouldn't amount to anything. But God, they say I'd be in prison by now. But God, some say I'd be dead by now. But God, amen. None of us. Sitting in here today, no matter what you've gone through, have gone through the stuff that Job went through. Job lost everything that he had. But he still testified that his trust in God got him through his afflictions. David then testified that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, he would not have made it. Paul then chimed in and and gave his testimony by saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have to be careful in knowing what God has provided or or given us to to help us along this journey called life. Uh, Are y'all still with me? The Bible never said that God will not put more on us than we can bear. You will never find that in the scripture. He never said this, but, but, but the word does allude to something that he will not allow to be too much on us that we can't handle. And that something is temptation. <clears throat> First of all, 
we, we, we got to know what temptation is and and we, we need to know that temptation is not of God. James one and 13 says that when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. God might test you, but God will not tempt you. Are y'all are y'all with me? Let, 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 there, there is a difference between testing and tempting. Amen. Testing means testing is the means through through which the genuine of the genuineness of faith is proven and your Christian character is developed. Let me give you an example. Abraham had a son by the name of Isaac. He was a young man and God tested Abraham's faith. He said, Abraham, take your son, the son that you love, named Isaac. Take him to Mount Moriah and offer him a burnt sacrifice unto me. That was a test. He was testing Abraham's faith. Would he do what God said? Abraham knew he had faith that that was a promised seed that God had given him that would bless all the families of the earth from him. All the families of the earth would be there. Now he's saying, kill him. OK, God, somehow he's going to live. Abraham followed through with it, took him to Mount Moriah, told the servants, y'all stay here. Me and the lad, we're going to worship and we'll be back. I know I'm supposed to kill him up there, but somehow resurrection is going to take place and both of us coming back down there heal. That is a test of our faith. And sometimes God will test us to see, can he depend on us? He'll see, can he trust us? And also he'll see, do we trust him? So God will test us, but God will not tempt us. A amen. Because tempting has to do with something evil being involved. Tempting is the pressure to, to give in to ungodly influences that lead you away from God and into sin. Temptation is something that's trying to get you to do wrong. God will never try to lead you into something which is wrong. Uh, are are y'all willing? Are y'all hearing me? God's, God will test but God will never tempt. And because God loves us, God will not allow us to be tempted by anyone or anything so powerful that we can't get out of it. But that's good news for somebody. It's good news for me. Anything that I'm tempted with, God has given us the power to get out of it. A -a Amen. And I hope to goodness this morning, please, that no one get to the point where where you feel that you will never get tempted or you won't have to struggle with temptation. All of us. Every day. Every day is tempted somehow. A -a amen. A -a amen. Some of you, some of y'all still. A -a -a amen. Unless you are incapacitated. Somehow, every day that you walk on this earth, you are going to be tempted with evil somehow. Well, some, some of you might look at some stuff and say, well, I can't remember when I'm tempted. Well, let's look at the many different forms of temptation. Some of us are tempted to lie. Let me, let me, let me go back. Let me go back. All of us sometime during the day are tempted To lie, not to be honest, not to tell the truth. That's what lie means for some of those who don't know. We, we, we may be tempted. We may be tempted to steal, to take something that doesn't belong to us. We we may be tempted to cheat. And that's not just talking about on your husband, your wife or your boo or whomever. But but your income tax season is in full swing now and you may count some children that don't belong to you. That, that's cheating. That's that's a sin. I don't care how much money you get back. But pastor, they but pastor, they took this much money out my chair. I don't care if you lying and cheating. You still 
sinning. Child, I'll let you, I, I'll let you hold, I'll let you hold Tarika. She'll, she'll get you another thousand dollars. Just give me half of it. That's cheating. Boy, I'm going to be talking to somebody in here. Amen. The temptation to gossip. Because you got that one friend that call you every day on the phone, child. Guess what I heard now? Or you on you on Facebook or the gram or you're looking at Twitter seeing what the latest gossip is because you get turned on by that stuff. That, all that stuff is temptation. No, Pastor, that don't bother me. How about overeating? Just because you go to the buffet don't mean you try to eat up everything. But because it's out there, it's a temptation. Holding the grudge. They did me wrong and I'm, I don't like them now. And it's sad that some folks are in church, the children of some folks are in church, disliking somebody else for what they did to their mama or their grandma. It's temptation. Coveting. I want one of them. I wouldn't mind having that. I want, I'm going to get me one of those. And God got you one. And bless you with one, but yet you want to get yourself in debt with some, what somebody else got. We done slashed the price 30 percent and you willing to get yourself back in debt. That's temptation. Mm -hmm. mm. How about envying? Envy is you might not want what they got, but you feel that they don't deserve it. And you get mad with them. But don't let God bless you with a large sum of money. Oh, they think they something now. Don't get that new car riding around there. huh? They, they, they too good to, to speak to us now. That's envy. And that's a temptation that all of us have. How about this one? How about this one? How about to lust? You know that ain't your man. You know that ain't your woman. But you're right. You're right here. You're right. Amen. And the thing about lust, you don't have to say a word. Jesus says that if you lust in your heart after a woman, you've committed adultery already. You don't even have to say a word, but it's there and the temptation is there. Sometimes you have to turn your head. Can't listen to certain stuff. You listen to certain stuff, that temptation start coming because it makes you want to dial that number again. Temptation. All of this is tempt, and all of us get tempted. How about this? When I had with some people still saying, "No, that ain't me, Pat. I don't get that." How about when somebody do you wrong? How quick do you want to cuss them out? Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He hold my tongue. He hold my tongue. But you're still tempted to do it. The thought is there, even though you don't follow through. Well, I wish I had some real folk in here. I just told y'all, all of us get tempted to do one or several of these things every day. But if you don't yield to the temptation, you do not sin. But yet the temptation will come. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Every day and every day we're tempted to do some things that are ungodly. But the good news is, as we said in the verse, God will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to bear. In other words, in other words, whatever comes at you, God has given you the power to stand up to it. Are y'all with me? 
and see, and, 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 and see, and, 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 and the thing to stand up to it. Sometimes all it takes is two little letters in the English language. That's an N and an O. And for some of y'all trying to figure it out, that spells no. Sometimes all you have to do is say, boy, y'all catching on in a hurry. That's a little bitty word. That's a little bitty word. But that little word has a lot of power. Uh, Are y'all with me? Just saying no can let folks know that you mean business. It can let somebody know, can tell somebody that you're not going to go along with whatever, with whatever they might be up to. Because we know some of us still got them friends that like to get into mess and they don't like to get into it by themselves. And all you have to do is say, no, I ain't doing that no more. Amen, somebody. No means that that I'm not going along and, and you can tell somebody that you're not putting up with things the way that they used to be any longer. And you can just say no. Touch your neighbor and say, just say no. Just say no. Touch him on the other side and tell him, baby, just say no. <laughs> and then. <sighs> There are those times when just saying no will not suffice. Just saying no just don't work for you. Because there's some things that will come on you that's stronger than your just saying no. There's some times in life when you need that little extra something because the temptation is stronger than your own will. <laughs> Well, I wish I had some real folk in here. This, amen. There, there are some times when, 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 you, when you want what's being offered to you because your flesh knows the satisfaction that that temptation can give you. <sighs> I know I don't need that red velvet cake right there, but I know how good it is. I know I don't need to go over there to that house that called me, but I know what's there waiting on me if I go. Uh, see, y'all ain't y'all ain't try, y'all ain't trying to talk to me this morning. I know I don't need to answer that phone call because I know I cannot resist who's on the other side. In times like that, we need a little extra something to help us over that hump. Can I get some help in here? And let me tell you, when those things come, when those temptations come, that's Satan saying that I know what's in you. So I'm going to tempt you with what you like. Because in order for Satan to tempt you, he's going to tempt you with something that's already in you. If you don't like money, he's not going to tempt you with money. If you don't like women or men, he's not going to tempt you with that. But he's going to tempt you with whatever is in you already. Can I get a witness in here? James 1, 14, 15 says, but each one is tempted by his lust, which means the things that you already desire being drawn away and seduced by them. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin and sin when it's fully formed, bring forth death. In order for temptation to be presented, Satan has to know his audience and he knows what you like. But no matter how strong the temptation is that Satan may present, In front of you, God has given us some tools in our tool chest to resist the devices of the enemy. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And the latter part of our verse for today says that God will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 
In other words, God has given us what we need to make it in. He gave us these things a long time ago. And guess what? All of them still work. Are, are, y'all, are y'all with me now? So what does God give us that's still in existence and, and still working for us so we'll be victorious in this life? There are three things that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to give you these three things, then I'm going to finish this little Easter speech, all right? The first thing that he's given us is the word still works. The word still works. We can stand on God's word. Isaiah 40 and 8 says the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. God's word has been here from the beginning and it will always remain forever. Jesus puts it this way in Matthew 24 and 35. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus gives us the assurance that the word of God will always work in our lives. Whether we need love, the word still works. If we need peace, the word still works. If we need joy or healing or deliverance, the word still works. If we need comfort or encouragement, the word still works. And we can find all of that in the word of God. See, the word has the answer to every situation, every circumstance and every problem that we will ever encounter in this world. We can find it in the word. David testified in Psalm 119 how important the word of God is for him in his life. And he said it in several places. In verse 11, David says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, your word I keep in me to keep me from sinning. Your your word lets me know what sin is, so I try to stay away from it. Are 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 y'all with me? David says in in verse 105 of Psalm 119, he said, Thy word is a lamp upon my feet and a light upon my path. In other words, your word gives me direction. His son Solomon wrote in Proverbs 3 and 6, he said, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. That's that's God's word. And then he said in verse 133 of Psalm 119, he see, asked God a question in his prayer. He said, Lord, order my steps in thy word. And notice what he said in the second part of that. He said, and let not my let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Lord, show me where I should go and please lead me away from temptation and deliver me from all evil. This is what David says. The writer of Hebrew chapter chapter four, verse 12 says, for the word of God is powerful. It's it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That is the word of God. And the word still works. The word of God is still effective. It's still an effective tool that will help us on this Christian journey. Touch a neighbor and tell them the word still works. The word of God is a tool that still works. Jesus even used it when he was in the wilderness. Satan came and tried to tempt him. And every time Satan tempted him, Jesus, the first thing that came out of Jesus' mouth, it is written. You got to have some word down on the inside of you. If you're going to in order to make this journey, this Christian journey in life, you're going to have to have some word down on the inside of you. Amen. Another tool that God gives us that still works. That is prayer. Prayer still works. If God is going to bring you out. If God is going to deliver you, if God is going to heal you, save you, if God is going to comfort you or supply your every need, then you need to talk to him. Let me say that again. You need to talk to him. You, you need to talk to him. (sighs) 
You need to go to God for yourself. Too many church folks are depending on other folks to pray for them. You're not enunciating that right. You're not asking right. You should not ask folks to pray for you. You should be asking folks to pray with you. So they ain't getting many amens on that. Mm-hmm. Some folks run and say, I need for you to pray for me. Are you praying for yourself? Some folks act like they are scared to go to the Lord and pray themselves. They act like God is some big celestial ogre and he's going to eat them if they come near him. The hymn writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Now, you know, you ain't scared to go to your friend. You're not scared to go to folk who you feel comfortable with. You're not scared to go and ask them anything. I don't care how crazy it is. You'll go and ask. Them. Well, the hymn writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. He's a friend. The Bible said in Hebrew, I mean, in Proverbs, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So if he's my friend, I can go to him and ask him anything. The hymn writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All. Oh our sins and griefs to bear. I can go to the Lord and tell him anything. I can't trust y'all like that. Because if I tell y'all some of the stuff that I've done, y'all might tell me you don't need to come back here anymore. See, look how quiet y'all done got. <laughs> I'm glad I got a witness out there. But I can go to the Lord in prayer and tell him my, de my deepest and darkest secret. And he ain't got a word about him telling nobody else. That's what prayer is. Prayer is communication with God. I talk to him. He talked back to me. Come on and talk to me, somebody. That hymn writer said, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. It is a privilege to be able to talk to God. Prayer works. He even said something else. He said, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Forfeit means to give up. We're going through some stuff that we don't have to all because we ain't talking to God about it. Oh, what needless pains we bear. I'm hurting sometimes or you might be hurting and all you got to do is take it to the Lord in prayer and God will come for you. Prayer still works. G G G G Jesus says in, in, in Matthew 8. In Matthew 6 and 8b, he says, your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. But God still wants you to ask. God wants you to talk to him. He will allow you to get into situations or situations to come upon you so you can talk to him. Another hymn writer said, 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 father, I stretch my hands to thee. I ain't got to run to my pastor. I don't have to run to the psychologist. I don't have to run to Dr. Phil. I can stretch my hands to the Father and say, Lord, I need you. Prayer still works. Now, 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 now get this. When you ask, you got to come to God the right way. You, you got to come to God in the right spirit. You can't just come all holy and thank you big because you got a title or you got some kind of status. You got to come to him in the right spirit. You got to come to him humble and you got to come to him sincere. God says, I told Solomon in Second Chronicles 7, 14, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear you got to come in the right way in order for me to hear you. You got to come in the right way. Then I'll hear your prayer will forgive you of the mess that you got in. And then I'll heal your land. That's what he said. That's what that's what that is what he said. And then James four and three said, you ask 
and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. What is he saying? James said when you do try to pray and you might be asking for the right thing, but you might be asking for the wrong reason. Ooh. When he says you ask and you don't get it because you're asking for the wrong reason. Ain't nothing wrong with you asking for it, but if you're asking for the wrong reason, God ain't going to get it to you. Pray ain't going to work for you. So both of those verses tell us that prayer is a way to communicate with God and let him know that if we're going to get what we need, we need to ask him in the right way. James 5, 16 says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you pray right, you will get what you ask for. If it's in the will of God, you'll get what you ask for. A songwriter said prayer is the key and your faith unlocks the door. Amen. Touch your neighbor and tell them prayer still works. The last little tool, the last little tool is that still works. We got we got we got um, we got the word. It still works. God gave it to us. It's still here. We got prayer. It still works. God gave it to us. It's still here. And the last thing that still works for us is the blood. The blood still works. Every now and then, all of us will allow temptation to win. Let me say that again and get too many. That, that should have been 100 percent class participation. Every now and then, all of us allow temptation to win. That, that's still only 75 percent. Every now and then, all of us allow temptation to win. We yield to it. Thus producing sin. And sin causes us to be separated from God. Are y'all still agreeing with me? Now the blood, not just any blood, but I'm talking about Jesus's blood. The blood reconciles us. It has the power to bring us back in connection or right relationship back to God. Yeah, boy, I'm glad somebody in here with me. Amen. Because this is what this is what happens. Sin causes a stain on your spirit. Sin causes a stain on your spirit. Can, 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 I, can I get a witness in here? And that stain that gets in your spirit is so tough. That tide can't take it out. Gain can't wash it out. Bold ain't bold enough. A amen, somebody. <laughs> it, it can't get it out. And you can't cheer your way out of it. No matter how much bleach you add to it, it's still going to be stained. Amen. And the only thing, there's only one thing that can take that stain away. And I heard the hymn writer write, he said, what can wash away all my sins? <laughs> only one thing that's nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing. But the blood of Jesus, oh, how precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus one day took all of our black souls, dipped it in his red blood, and it came out white as snow. The blood still works. And his blood is covering all of us still today because it's still at work. Some of us will be in hospitals, but the blood is covering us. 
Some of us should be in the graveyard, but the blood is covering us. Some of us could have lost our mind, but the blood is still covering us because the blood still works. The writer of Hebrew 9 and 22 says, and almost all things are by law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. That means that without the blood still working on our behalf, we'd be lost in a world of sin without hope. Without the blood still working on our behalf, we wouldn't have God's mercy and his forgiveness. Without the blood still working on our behalf, we wouldn't have God's protective covering over us. Without the blood still working on our behalf, our sin-sick souls wouldn't be healed. Without the blood working on our behalf, we would not be redeemed back to the Father. All of us would be on our way to hell. But because the blood still works... <laughs> How does the blood still work? I heard Andre Crouch explain it. He said it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me my strength from day to day to day to day to day. It will never, it will never it will never lose its power because the blood still. All standing.